All right. My job as host is to uh, keep the momentum up in between comics. You guys are making my life so fucking easy. You're an incredible audience. Your next comic is an incredible comic. He's in town all the way from Denver, Colorado, and he is so goddamn funny. A good friend. We're really excited to have him in the room. Start clapping right now, everybody. Start clapping right now for Alec Flynn, everybody. Wow, what a cool basement, dude. This place rules. I've had a strange week. The weird friend in my group just got a new girlfriend, and uh, she's, like, way out of his league. Like, suspiciously out of his league. But she says that he has big golden retriever energy. Have you guys heard that? Big golden retriever energy? I don't know. That's kind of fun. That's cute. I'm going to start saying that. Big golden retriever energy. Yeah, we were all calling it mild autism, so... <laughs> Have you met Dave? He's a biter. Arr, watch out. <laughs> Good guy, though. Great guy. You know, not like I'm going to stop hanging out with him. I'm 26. I, I can't make any more guy friends. That's about it. I don't, I've reached my cap. What am I going to do? Just approach some random guy at the bar? What's up, dude? <laughs> it's a really cool bull's hat. Um, do you want to talk? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't want to make this weird. I just want you to be a part of my life. Fuck! Uh, Jesus! I don't understand. We got like 13 different apps on our phone that help us meet women. We could really use one for platonic male friendships. Wouldn't that be the perfect dating app for all the pictures of me holding a fish? Like, yo, I'm swiping right. This guy might have a boat. Let's go. You ever think about what the DMs would look like on a platonic male friendship app? Hey. Hey. Chat ended. That's it. I'm like, I'm inviting this guy to my wedding, dude. Let's go. And it's tough because at this point, I'm also like, I, I don't have any more spots left on the roster, really. You know, because guys, we don't kick anybody out of our friend groups. You know, you could be the most toxic person I've known my entire life. You say like three funny things every time we hang out. I'm always texting you to come over for the pregame. That's, that's kind of how it goes. And ladies, you have to put up with this. You know, you'll be nudging your man at the party like, Derek needs to leave right now. <laughs> and he turns back to you like, babe, look, I know he just punched your TV. <laughs> Hear me out. Wait till he does the Borat voice. I'm telling you. <laughs> I had to like move to a new city. I had to like build out like a new group of guys. So the first kind of guy I looked for was a really big guy. Like, it was someone with, like, haunches, you know? Like, uh, someone you can name, like, Big Rig or Bubba, one of those. Because I'm a short and loud guy, and I truly believe that every donkey needs a Shrek. It's, it's just conducive to my lifestyle. I'm out at the bar chirping people, like, hey, buddy, your girlfriend looks like a thumb, all right? My friend thinks so, too. And he picks me up, puts me in the baby chest carrier, and we can just... wailing away. My legs dangle, but it's fun. You need a rich friend, too. You need a member of the Lucky Sperm Club. Very important, okay? Like you need someone who's going to put their card down for the vacation rental, but then also charge you on Venmo for everything that happens during the trip. I'm telling you, if a guy with a Patagonia vest says, this round's on me, he's going to, like, 2% Venmo charge you for everything that happens. Don't we hate those friends, the guys where it's just, like, every little thing, they're coming after you? shared pizza together, late night Ubers. It's like, I thought you were just being a good guy, okay? Now you're coming after me like the IRS and I gotta talk to you like you're my H&R Block guy. And I usually just gotta go, dude, you know I don't have it, okay? What is this? And like, look, I'm all about financial independence for 2023, all right? Declining petty Venmo charges is where it starts. I'm serious, hey, we gotta get on this. 765 for the shared Uber, declined, all right? 225 for gas money, declined, all right? $200 for the shared vacation rental, I slept on the floor, declined, not gonna happen. <laughs> Spent the past five months this year uh, working as a teacher, and um, I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have been, really, I shouldn't have been, <laughs> shouldn't have been there. But I told my friends, when you really find out how your friends feel about you when you tell them that you're teaching, so I'll just say things to your face like, wow, they must really need people, huh? <laughs> like, yeah, dude, there's a shortage of heroes right now, actually. 
It's always your buddies that work in tech sales or something. And it's like, dude, like I would never say that to you about your job. I never go, wow, wow, they must really need a washed up D3 athlete with a Coke problem, huh? <laughs> I did my best for those kids. I tried, it's, it's hard, not easy, okay? I, I'll be honest, I did a whole lesson on apostrophes one day. I think the whole thing was wrong, okay? <laughs> They were asking me questions like, how do I know if it's possessive? I'm like, sound it out, dude. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to... It's crazy. I, I was a sub before I came full time. And as a sub, all you got to do is just kind of throw on a movie. But then you just watch the first half of that movie like six times in a row. Um, not too bad, but you get to seventh pier and you're just like, look, we're starting to move on from the middle. All right, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I got to find out this bitch defeats the Huns. Okay, I'm losing my mind. I also didn't like being called a sub. I think that was just too on the nose in general. Because trust me, in that classroom, I was not the dom, okay? They didn't respect any of my safe words. Stop, go to the office. Don't drink the hand sanitizer, nothing. Nothing works. I don't know. They find out everything about you on the internet almost immediately. Remember growing up, we thought all of our teachers just lived at the school? Remember that? <laughs> I'd be in the middle of a lesson, some kid would put out Google Maps and go, damn, mister, you live in a bad part of town. <laughs> I had another student of mine comment on a picture of me doing stand-up on Instagram, and he said, your ass. <laughs> I'm like, Eric, this needs an apostrophe, dude. Come on. <laughs> It's not good, dude. They gotta start paying these teachers more. But instead of paying them more, uh, all they do is give them little treats here and there. It's like, oh, you had a kid call you a bitch ho? That sucks, but we do have pizza in the teacher's lounge, <laughs> if that'll work for you. I'm now conditioned to think that anytime something traumatic happens to me, I'm gonna get a free lunch. <laughs> it was, we had a guy on our staff get arrested for underage sex with a minor, and my first thought was, they fucking better get us Cold Stone, dude. That is fucked up. <laughs> They didn't. <laughs> I've been trying to get out there, uh, very, you know, like date a little bit. I'm feeling very hetero pessimistic about it. Um, I know it's Pride Month. I'm a straight. Any other straighties? Straighties? Woo! Ah! All right. I'm trying to. What am I? I'm trying to make that like a thing. We see a. Ah! I mean, <laughs> Nobody else likes it. That's okay. <laughs> It's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit trying right now for the straighties out there. Uh, I feel like on social media isn't helping too much. Because anytime I open up my social media feed, I'm just hit with uh, dating advice I didn't ask for. Like all on my feed, there will just be beautiful women with their phone in front of their faces telling me, hey guys, here's the 13 things you do that give girls the ick. <laughs> Number one, existing. Number two, ankle socks. I'm like, okay, should I kill myself or go to Kohl's? I mean, I can try and do both, I guess. The sad part is, though, the flip side of that coin is the alpha male content. Are we familiar with, you know, the aviators? They're smoking the cigars. They're telling you, high value men are bred to be hunters. Are you ready to go out there and hunt for your prey? I mean, I was planning on making pizza rolls and jerking off, but... It's sad because I, I, you know, like when your friends, they get their hearts broken, that's the content that they go to. You know, instead of, it's just like, I had a buddy post on Instagram, a story that said, when she broke up with you, she made a bet on your future. Make sure she loses that bet. <laughs> like, you about to shoot up a casino? It's, it's I'm worried. <laughs> It's sad. I wish the boys felt comfortable enough to come and talk to me when they felt sad, okay? I've been going to therapy for like a month, all right? <laughs> I'm an emotional intelligence brown belt at this point. I got some moves I'm ready to share, all right? You want to kill yourself? You try going for a walk, huh? <laughs> You're meditating? <laughs> I don't know. I do want to get a girlfriend. I put having a girlfriend on my vision board. It's a big goal for me. Um, that's not funny. Please don't laugh. I think the part I miss the most is the cuddling aspect of it. Personally, I'm a big spoon. I like being big spoon. I think there's nothing more romantic than spooning your girl all night and then waking up the next morning and saying, hey, uh, my shoulder's dislocated. Get off me. 
My shoulder's purple. My Fitbit says I'm dead. Seriously. Get off. Plus, I'm a shorter fella, so whenever you get a tall woman, you feel like a Jansport. Have you ever been, uh... Oh, my God. It's great. It's really great. Problem is, I'm a sleep talker, and being a sleep talker is a lot like having a podcast, because only the people close to you will ever listen to it, and they just want you to stop. <laughs> So if you're my little spoon, I've just got you caught in a cocoon of confusion at all times. You ever wake a girl up by clapping in front of her face and scream, first down, like you ever? Not good. Not good. And it's really hard to like build relationships with women because I'm a guy, I don't really say the emotional things or like, you know, the feelings that I have when I'm awake. So your subconscious will decide, hey, how's three in the morning to tell her how you really feel about her friends? How's that sound? Yeah, you ever wake up losing a fight? You started. <laughs> Not great. And they think I'm like faking it somehow. They think I'm making this up. What do you think? I'm just waiting for you to go to sleep so I can gaslight you with my dreams? Do you think that's... I'm just like, oh, she's such an ugly crier. <laughs> All right, guys, that's been my time. Give it up for Joe, everybody. This place is awesome. Alec Flynn, everybody. Ah! <laughs> I don't, ow. <laughs> he hit my tooth on the microphone and then said, ow, very effeminately into that microphone. Woof, that is not how you do this. Um, one more time for Alec, everybody. Southeast Finest. <laughs>